Okay, welcome back after the break. And uh, just before we went for the break, we were looking at, uh, you know, about how Jesus uh, introduced the kingdom. Uh, we saw that he preached the good news of the kingdom. He taught uh, the principles of the kingdom and he demonstrated the power of the kingdom of um, God. And we looked at, uh, you know, um, that, uh, you know, what we need to preach about God's kingdom. Now we look at, uh, you know, what uh, Jesus taught concerning the kingdom of God. So we look at a few things uh, uh, that Jesus taught with uh, or within the context of, uh, um, you know, the kingdom. Okay, so uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, we read that uh, Jesus says one of the Beatitudes is, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so who are the poor in spirit? Those who are constantly hungry for more of God, for more things of God, uh, you know, more revelations from his word. They are more hungry for the spiritual things of God. Okay, then the constant state of uh, wanting, begging, crying out, uh, you know, for more of God in their lives, more of demonstration of God's power in their life or in and through their life or, uh, you know, uh, uh, or uh, hungry and crying out to God for, you know, for him to reveal uh, 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 more of himself through his word uh, or to reveal, um, uh, you know, uh, what he has written in and through his uh, word. And he says, those who are poor in spirit, those who are hungry in their spirit man for more of the things of God, you know, they will experience the kingdom of heaven. And in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, we read that um, another beatitude where we read Jesus saying, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. So, you know, remember that when we are persecuted or when we are wrongly judged or we are mistreated, um, uh, when we do what is right, which is what is the truth, what is honorable in God's sight, um, Remember that, you know, the kingdom of heaven is yours. And uh, even though you suffer persecution um, or mistreatment or you are looked down, uh, you know, um, remember that the glory of God will be revealed in and through you both uh, in this life and uh, when God comes to establish his uh, his natural kingdom and also uh, in it, when we spend uh, time with God in eternity. Okay, uh, as Second Corinthians chapter four verse seventeen says that uh, you know all that we suffer now are very uh, momentarily. Okay, they are just for the moment; they will pass away, uh, compared to you know uh, the kingdom of God, which is much greater than all of these sufferings, all of the these difficulties that we'll face. Uh, so you know, even as you're going through sufferings, or even when you go through sufferings, remember there is something that far outweighs all of these suffering, these tribulations, these difficulties, uh, that is the glory of God that will be revealed through you uh, and that you would, you know, be part of God's um, natural kingdom and also his eternal uh, kingdom, okay? Uh, and another teaching that, uh, uh, that Jesus, uh, you know, taught uh, regarding the kingdom of God is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. So can somebody read that, please? Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Matthew 5 verse 19, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these command, commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, so here, Jesus, thank you, Paul. Here, Jesus is saying who is great in the kingdom of God. So who is great in the kingdom of God? From this verse, who is great in the kingdom of God? Who is one who does his teaching. word? One who does his word, thank you. And teaches his word. And teaches his word. Thank you, Rosalind. So the one who does the word and the one who teaches the word is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, which is so contrary or very different uh, uh, from what you know, uh, the kingdom of this world is the kingdom of uh, 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 of this world. Who is great? One who has 
more money, Jeffina is saying, <laughs> okay, <laughs> who is great in the kingdom of the world? One who has great possessions and one who has great position, okay, possessions and uh, position, but you know, so different in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, who is great? One who does uh, uh, the word of God, who not just reads the word of God, but does what it says, and also teaches the word of God. And also Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 4, uh, he also taught that who is great in the kingdom of God? One who becomes a uh, childlike, who humbles himself like a child, uh, will be great in the kingdom of God. And also in Matthew chapter 20, verse 26, um, uh, Jesus says that, you know, if you humble yourself and you become a servant of others and you serve others, you will be called the greatest in the kingdom of uh, God. Okay, so uh, Jesus is instructing here us here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 19, that when we do his word in our personal lives and we live by his word, we follow it and then teach others to live by his word, then we will be called great in the kingdom of God. So it's actually doing his word in our personal lives, it's living by it, it's following it and then teaching us, teaching others to do it, you know, uh, they will be called uh, great in the kingdom of God, okay? And then he talks about, uh, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, he talks about doing the will of the Father. Uh, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven, okay? So Jesus is emphasizing that Doing the will of God is more important rather than, you know, just worshipping God or just honouring Him through our lips or just teaching uh, others through our lips and not doing it ourselves. He says it's very important for us to do the will of uh, God, okay? Um, he even revealed that knowing Him personally is more important uh, than being familiar with just using His name or ministering in His uh, name and sadly we get into this whole uh, you know this whole rut or this whole motion of it that you know we become so familiar with just speaking God's name using his name you know uh, using his name to command sickness and disease and oppression and you know uh, bondages to be broken uh, but you know we we get so caught up in doing things for God than just being with God okay it's more important for us to be with God uh, than just being busy bodies doing things for uh, God because when we are when we the more time we spend being with God you know we know that the kingdom is here in our hearts you know and um, when we spend time with God his presence and his power is manifested in and through us uh, wherever we go and it doesn't it becomes so effortless we don't have to put in so much of effort because we're just coming out of his presence and when we come out of his presence we are just manifesting the power of his kingdom we are just manifesting his kingdom presence his reign and rule uh, wherever we go and whatever we uh, do and then also we know that Jesus taught uh, many different mysteries or aspects of the of his kingdom through his parables and we will look at it in, another, in in one of the other chapters in this book, so we'll not look at it here, okay? Now we look at the third um, uh, way Jesus, uh, you know, or the third um, uh, uh, approach of how Jesus introduced his kingdom. We saw that he preached the good news of the kingdom, he taught the principles of the kingdom, and the third one is he demonstrated the power of the kingdom of um, God, okay? Um, so we read in Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, Jesus says, If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. And in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8, Jesus says, As you go preach, uh, uh, you know, uh, he tells his disciples, As you go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you received, freely uh, give, okay? So 
uh, we read here in Matthew chapter, we also read in Matthew chapter 4 uh, and, uh, you know, uh, in Matthew chapter 9, uh, just before the break, we, we looked at those passages, how Jesus went about uh, uh, preaching and teaching and uh, healing the sick and raising uh, the dead and casting out demons. Uh, and we also look at this in, uh, uh, you know, Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, which I just uh, read. So Jesus was saying that, uh, you know, uh, this is me ushering the kingdom of God, even as I cast out demons, even as I heal the sick, even as I uh, raise the dead. So he demonstrated the power of the kingdom, uh, and that is how he ushered in the kingdom of God. So how did Jesus usher in the kingdom of God? He, he ushered in the kingdom of God by demonstrating the power of the uh, kingdom of um, God. And uh, he also, you know, uh, pointed out to his, uh, his science, miracles and wonders as a clear, uh, you know, expression uh, or an indication that God's kingdom is come among men, okay, or, or God's kingdom has come here on Earth. And how did he, um, you know, express this? He pointed it out uh, to the demonstration of his science, miracles, and wonders, uh, the works that he did. And he said, these are clear indications or these are clear expressions that the kingdom of God has come among you. Okay. And not only did Jesus demonstrate the power of the kingdom, we see that, you know, he calls his 12 disciples. He gave them the authority to and the power to go preach and teach. Um, and we, I just read that in Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and uh, 8. He says, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, uh, cleanse the lepers, uh, raise the dead and cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely uh, give. So we see that. Uh, you know, Jesus not only had the authority, but he gave his the 12 disciples the authority. Then he gave the 70, he called out the 70. He gave them the authority also to do the same thing. And also, even before he went up, uh, he ascended back to the Father. You know, he gave all those who believed in him the authority. That means we read in, J in John chapter 17, uh, Jesus in his high priestly prayer tells the Father, you know, um, I want... Uh, those who believe in me uh, to share the same glory that I had uh, when I was here on earth. So, you know, he gave us the glory, the sonship glory. Remember, we learned about this in uh, Christology. He gave us a sonship glory uh, to manifest who he is and what he does here on uh, earth. Okay. So, um, even as you and I are part of this uh, kingdom of God, and uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, this generation now of, uh, you know, of the church who has been given the authority or the keys of the kingdom, uh, you know, uh, we don't have to come up with uh, any new methodology or new way of doing things, uh, you know. Uh, yes, we can uh, invite new ways of how we can uh, creatively, uh, uh, you know, initiate or uh, establish the kingdom of God here or uh, further the kingdom of God here. But the same methodology we can use that uh, Jesus used, the same approach that Jesus used of preaching, teaching and demonstrating the power of his kingdom is the same thing that we can use in our time, in our generation, uh, both to announce the kingdom of God and to demonstrate his presence and his power of his kingdom here through signs, miracles and uh, wonders. Okay, so uh, even as we are part of this kingdom of God, we have this uh, privilege, but we also have this responsibility and God has given us, uh, you know, uh, uh, different ways in which we can usher in his dominion, his power, his government here, uh, how we can decree we can command uh, through prayer um, and through his uh, names that we looked at in Isaiah chapter um, uh, in 9 verses 6 and 7 you know how we can speak uh, uh, the different names of God which is an expression of who he is and what he wants to see in his kingdom and even as we do that uh, with boldness with authority in humility you know, uh, poor in spirit, uh, uh, you know, hungry for more of God, uh, humbling ourselves uh, by not just being a hero of the word, but doing uh, 
uh, God's word, uh, living God's word, walking in uh, walking uh, God's word, and then teaching it to people. Uh, you know, we will be able to see the power of God uh, demonstrated, or the kingdom of God being established, manifested, and uh, you know, uh, uh, growing in our midst wherever God has placed us. Okay, so that is chapter two. Anyone has any questions? I hope all of you are following through. You are able to understand. Am I too fast? Am I too fast or uh, you're able to understand, you're able to catch? No, ma'am. I am not okay, in the class. Hi, Paul. Okay, thank you, Zilutoli. Thank you, Subhashish. Okay, any questions? Thank you, Rubega. Okay, if there are no questions, can we move on to chapter three, please? Is that okay? Yes, okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So in chapter 3, we are going to look at the church um, uh, and the kingdom, okay? So we look at what part does the church have in the kingdom of God and what is the relationship between the church and the kingdom. So we're going to look at two things. What part does the church uh, have in the kingdom of God and what is the relationship between the church and the kingdom of uh, God, okay? So we see that the church is part of the overall kingdom of God. Uh, at this present time, the church is the representation of the kingdom of God here on earth. And God has vested on the church the authority of the kingdom. And how do we know that? We read this in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. It's on page number 27 in your PDF. So can somebody read that, please? Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hate shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. So Peter had just revealed uh, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of uh, living God, and uh, and Jesus is saying, telling Peter, or he's uh, you know he's telling, he's saying this to Peter that on this truth, Jesus is saying, I am going to establish my church. And this church will overthrow the powers of hell. And I will give the church the keys uh, of the kingdom of God. And here the keys signify authority. Okay, so Jesus is saying he will give the church the keys, which signifies the authority of the kingdom of heaven. So the church will have the authority uh, on earth to bind even as it is bound in heaven and the church will have the authority on earth to allow whatever is allowed in heaven. So the church has been vested with the authority or the church has been given the um, authority. Okay, uh, here we see also that, you know, Jesus says that the gates of hate will not prevail against it. The gates of hate will not prevail against it. Now, in in olden times, um, or in the Old Testament times, uh, the gates were, uh, of the city were, uh, you know, uh, a very important uh, place. It was a place where uh, the rulers sat and, uh, you know, brought about judgments um, or, uh, you know, uh, you know, if anyone had any disputes, that's where they would bring the disputes uh, at the gates where the ruler sat and they would pass their uh, judgment. So it was the seat of power. Okay, the gates were considered to be the seats of power. It was also a place of protection and control. 
okay so the the watchman who used to guard the city gates uh, would not is allow anyone and everyone to enter the uh, cities like we have uh, gated communities where uh, you know or uh, in apartments you know not everyone is allowed if you're a visitor when they call the person whose home you want to visit and they ask permission and then you are allowed to enter so there is uh, restrictions there of entry and uh, exit um, and things are controlled at the city gate so it's a place of protection and control and uh, so here uh, you know gates of hell or gates of hades is actually talking about the powers of hell now we need to understand that uh, gates don't move Okay, they are stationed, they are positioned in one place. Uh, they don't have legs uh, to move. They are just stationed at one place. So uh, it uh, here it, it's, it says that the gates of uh, Hades shall not prevail against it. So gates are stationary. They don't move. Um, and so it's the... Um, it's the responsibility of the church to advance against the gates of uh, hell. We don't sit waiting for the gates of hell to come to us, uh, but we, you know, uh, as a church that Jesus is building, you know, we need to uh, confront uh, and we need to overthrow the powers of Hell. So we need, we have given the authority, uh, you know, the weapons that we have given, Paul says, is not carnal, but, uh, you know, is strong enough to tear down every stronghold, every forces of darkness. Um, and so we have been given the authority, we've been given the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom is, uh, you know, we've been given the authority to use God's name. Uh, we also studied in the last semester, you know, uh, what weapons that God has given us for our warfare. Um, and God has given us everything we need for life and godliness, everything we need to fight against the enemy. So, uh, the, so the church is, um, you you know, is equipped, uh, strengthened, and given everything that is required to advance against the gates of hell and to uh, overthrow it. Okay, so you and I are in a position and uh, we are, have the authority uh, uh, to overcome the gates of hell and not succumb to it or not live in fear of the enemy or of his curses or, or his schemes or what he can do um, against us. Okay. Uh, and we also know the keys of hell and death, meaning uh, here is that Jesus has conquered uh, uh, Satan. Uh, you know, he has the authority over Satan. He's received back the authority that man gave to Satan when, uh, you know, when they uh, disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. And Jesus has taken back the authority. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, he has also broken the power of death and uh, the power of sin. So, you know, he has uh, now given us the church the keys of the authority, what he has won on the cross, what he has taken back from Satan, he's given it to us as the church. And who is the church? It's you and I, okay? You and I are part of the church and we have been given that responsibility and we have been given the keys of uh, the authority to overthrow uh, the devil and all of his, uh, uh, his works and schemes and to usher in the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Now let's go back and look at the... Uh, what happened in Genesis, uh, uh, we look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 uh, to 28. Okay, so can somebody read that quickly, please? Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our, like, our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed him, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over everything, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. Uh, so here we see uh, that, or we read that God created both Adam and Eve. 
Adam and Eve were both created and made. Um, how do we know that? We read that in, uh, in verse 26. God says, let us make man in our image. So, you know, God made man. And we also read in verse 27, so God created man in his own image. So we see that Adam was both created and made. Um, and when God said, let us make man in our image. Now, Adam uh, was an offspring of God. His origin, uh, he had his origin in God. His origin was of God. So just imagine uh, this king, you know, who is the omnipotent ruler, uh, who is almighty, who is all powerful, who is so magnificent, so awesome. Uh, he created Adam and Eve and he tells them or he issues this decree to them uh, to have dominion on the earth okay so just as the king spoke into the lives of adam and eve and told them to have dominion on the earth you know the king of the kingdom of heaven is also speaking to each one of us so he's speaking into our lives uh, and telling us that we are created to have dominion here on the earth so god gave or the king gave dominion to man on the earth so whatever transpires here on the earth is under uh, you know our jurisdiction okay because god has given us the dominion and the authority so whatever transpires here on the earth is under our uh, jurisdiction because we are uh, being given the authority or we have the authority on this uh, planet and god says i am giving them the authority so he's given us the authority and he says let them have uh, dominion. Now, these are not just small words that we can just take it very lightly when we read it. Um, you know, uh, uh, this is uh, God trans, this is the king of the kingdom of God. This is the king of the kingdom of heaven who's so magnificent who's so uh, awesome who our minds cannot even reason or phantom or understand who no man has seen you know uh, and he lives in unapproachable light this great awesome uh, mighty wonderful god is actually transferring or actually delegating his rule his lordship his authority his uh, dominion to mankind he's actually giving this authority uh, and his, this dominion to each uh, one of us. And it's not something that we can take very lightly. It's not something that we can read it or very lightly. These are not just small words, but we need to understand who is giving us uh, and what is he giving us. Okay, The king of this, uh, this great mighty, uh, the ruler of the heaven and earth who created the planets, who can't, we, we don't even know how many planets are there or how many universes uh, th there are or how many stars there are. You know, so uh, magnificent this God is, but yet he has given us, he's transferring, he's delegating his rule, his lordship, his authority, his dominion uh, to us as his sons and daughters. And we have been designed by God for dominion on the earth you know we have been designed for dominion we have been designed to rule we have not been designed to be slaves we have not been designed to live in fear of the enemy we are not been designed to give uh, you know say okay i can't overcome temptations or weaknesses or uh, you know i just can't stop this or i can't just uh, give up this weaknesses no we have not been designed to be slaves we are not slave material we are not servant material we have been designed for uh, to rule we have been designed to have dominion we have been designed to uh, have authority on this uh, on this earth and you know uh, on this earth God has given us the authority we are in charge you know um, uh, whatever happens here is uh, is under our jurisdiction so we need to understand that and we need to take that very seriously and we need to also understand you know uh, uh, from what mindset and perspective we need to operate out of and what God has given us, you know, um, and what he has called us to and how we can, uh, you know, express his kingdom here on earth. He's, he's given us everything. He has done everything. He's revealed everything to us. All we need to do is we just need to take the authority. We just need to speak, decree, command God's victory. 
um, you know, and ask him to bring about uh, an expression of who he is here on his kingdom. And we need to just believe that and see it as a done thing happening in the area where God has given us his domain and his rule. So uh, we also know that man's authority is spiritual because it comes from God. Okay, man's authority is spiritual because it comes from God. So God was saying that through mankind, his rule, his reign, his kingdom, his government will be extended throughout the earth. Okay, and through us, God wants uh, who he is to be expressed and what we looked at in uh, from the book of Isaiah. He wants all of that to be expressed through us in his uh, kingdom. And he will express himself here on earth uh, through us, through you and me. God wants to express himself through you and through me here uh, in his uh, in his kingdom. So all that I am. I will release, God is saying that all that I am, I will release to them so that the kingdom on earth will be a true representation of who I am. So God wants to release all of who he is through each one of us uh, so that we can be true representatives of him here on the earth. And how can he release that through us is only when we are mindful of who he is. And how can we be mindful of who he is? We need to read his word. Uh, we need to understand uh, the perspective, uh, the, mi uh, the mindset that God is calling us to have uh, and to operate out of and uh, to know who we are, uh, that we are kingdom uh, citizens, that we are sons and daughters, that we've been given the authority and to know what authority and power that he's given us and to um, use it. Okay. So Adam was a, a spirit being, uh, but he was made out of the d dust of the earth. Uh, and we know that his authority uh, came from uh, the invisible to the visible. Okay, so his authority came from God who is invisible uh, to the visible. Okay, so it is made known here on earth. His authority came from the spiritual because God is a spirit being, you know, and it came into our natural them okay so even as uh, we are spirit beings now because we are born again we are not dead in our spirit man but we're alive in our spirit man so we are spirit beings so god's authority comes through uh you know uh, the spiritual into the natural so that is why it's so important for us to you know feed our spirit man uh, for us to grow in our spirit man and not to feed our carnal nature, to put down the things of the flesh, but to grow in the things of the spirit, to be uh, poor in the spirit, to cry out, to beg out for more of God, for, uh, for uh, more expressions and manifestations of who he is in and through our spirit being. So that that can be revealed in the natural realm. So God's authority will flow from the invisible to the visible because we can't see God, we can't see heaven, it's invisible, but it flows out of the invisible into the visible, into our natural realm, and God's authority flows from the spiritual uh, into the natural. And that is why we say we are part of a spiritual kingdom now uh, because, uh, you know, God is spirit being and everything uh, is through the, uh, the spiritual. So, uh, so our authority, our dominion on the earth comes from God, who is spirit, and it is flowing through us here on this earth. So anything that we do uh, by ourselves, we will fail because of our authority does not come from ourselves, does not come from the natural, but our authority comes from God. Okay, And the key thing here we need to know is, uh, you know, that uh, the key uh, for us to operate out of this authority is obedience, okay? As long as Adam and Eve walked in obedience, they had the authority, the dominion on the earth that was delegated to them by God himself. But when they disobeyed, they lost the authority, uh, and we know that they became slaves of Satan. So obedience to God is absolutely vital for us to walk in dominion, to walk in authority, to walk in the power that God has vested upon us, that God has given to us. So as we walk in obedience, uh, we will be able to walk in the authority that God has vested in our lives. So in the church, 
the church today, the church that is uh, the redeemed saints of God, um, you know, God has restored his dominion. He has restored his authority. Why do I say restored? Because we know that when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost their authority, they lost their dominion. But when Jesus died on the cross, he took back the dominion and the authority. So it was, uh, he restored it back to us um, because we know that uh, Adam and Eve had uh, lost it and Satan took it away. But Jesus redeemed us and brought us back and then jesus says i'm giving you back the keys of the kingdom of heaven which means i'm giving you back the authority of the kingdom of heaven i'm giving you back the authority of heaven um, and the authority has been wested back into us who are people who are redeemed uh, from slavery of sin uh, back into the kingdom of heaven, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Uh, and we are the redeemed saints of God, um, uh, you know, given the authority of God's kingdom. And so God is looking at your life and my life and saying, I've given you the dominion. I've given you the authority on the earth and I want you to establish my rule, my kingdom presence, my kingdom reign, my kingdom government here on this earth okay so even as the king has given us the authority and the dominion and the power you know uh, we also as realize that we have the power and the authority over the demons that which means the demons have no authority to infest your life or my life now you know if we spot uh, a cockroach in our house or a rat or uh, anything you know any pest we just don't take it very lightly. We just don't let them uh, be in our house. We don't just let them infest our house. We either take a broom or we take a, uh, you know, a, a slipper or a shoes or whatever and we, we run behind it and try to do everything to just kill that, uh, that pest because we know that one, you know, is enough to uh, infest the entire house and to create a nuisance and to create a uh, mess. So, the same uh, principle applies here. Now, God has given us the authority. He's given us the power. He's given us the weapons that we need to fight um, uh, Satan. But we don't just allow him to infest our life and to, you know, have room in our lives and him to play with our lives. But we take the authority that is vested uh, by God, uh, the authority that he's given us, um, and we, you know, uh, that is given to us by the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And we speak, we decree, we command the devil to leave or his demons to leave. And we cancel and nullify every power uh, of the enemy, every demonic uh, affliction that is uh, in, in our lives or we see in our family or the people that we're ministering to uh, or uh, the ministry that we are uh, involved in. Okay. So... Um, Let's look at um, the kingdom of God in the early church. We see that, uh, you know, even Jesus, even as he um, proclaimed about the kingdom of God um, during his three years on in, in his ministry, we also see that he spent much time talking about the kingdom of God and demonstrating the power of the kingdom of God. Uh, the last 40 days uh, he lived here on the earth after he died and he uh, resurrected from the dead. And we see um, uh, him speaking even about the uh, kingdom. So we see that he continued to emphasize about the kingdom of God uh, even after he died and he um, rose again. Now, it's uh, the same thing has been given to us and trusted to us as a church, but uh, it's sad that the church of today, you know, we don't look at the things uh, with the kingdom of God perspective. Um, you know, even as, uh, you know, even in our lives, we don't look at things with the kingdom of God perspective. Uh, but it's important for us to do that as a church, uh, as people who have been redeemed and brought back into the kingdom and been given the authority of the kingdom. So even as we go through the study, you know, uh, it's our prayer, it's our hope that this will uh, change your mindset, your perspective, uh, that we will begin to think and live 
you know, um, uh, and we will become like kingdom citizens having a kingdom uh, mindset. And uh, we see this, uh, you know, happening even in the lives of uh, the uh, early uh, uh, church, the apostles. Uh, not only did Jesus preach and teach and demonstrate the kingdom of God, not only did he emphasize about this when the 40 days when he came to live here, uh, when he came back and, uh, you know, he rose from the dead. And even before he ascended to the Father, he taught about the kingdom of God. He demonstrated the power of the kingdom of God. And um, uh, we read this in Acts chapter 1, verse 3. It says, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during the 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of uh, God. Uh, and so we see that the same mandate was carried on by the early church, by the apostles. They also focused on uh, preaching and teaching the kingdom of God and also demonstrating the power of the kingdom of God. Uh, we see Philip you know, who was one of them who served in the early church. And then when persecution broke out, he went to Samaria and he uh, taught and preached about Jesus, about the kingdom of God. And he, uh, you know, people were, uh, you know, awed by the mighty signs, miracles and wonders he did. And they received uh, Jesus Christ and they were baptized uh, in the uh, water. So we see that um, in eight, uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 12, uh, uh, Philip uh, began preaching these things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus, and both men and women were uh, baptized. We also see uh, Paul and Barnabas, uh, you know, uh, talking about the kingdom of God when they were they went about preaching in different cities. Uh, it's mentioned here in on page number thirty in Acts chapter fourteen, verses twenty one and twenty two, when they preached in Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. You know, they strengthened the souls of the disciples. They uh, encouraged them to continue in the faith and um, also said that, you know, they will face tribulations um, even as they are part of the kingdom of God, but to hold on to their uh, faith. Even as Paul was in Ephesus, you know, uh, he spoke uh, boldly um, for three months in the synagogue, uh, you know, reasoning um, about things of the kingdom of God. Uh, in Acts chapter 20, verse 25, we see Paul preaching about the kingdom of God. Okay, and um, uh, and we see also in Acts chapter 28, verses 23 and 31, uh, when Paul was under house arrest in Rome, uh, you know, he just does not sit down and do nothing. But even as he is in house arrest, you know, he continued what he had been doing. And what was that? Preaching about the kingdom of uh, God and that is what he mentions in Acts chapter 28 verse uh, 23 and 31 he says you know um, uh, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concerns the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence and no one forbidding him okay and uh, we also see that um, the you know companions and workers uh, of the kingdom of God Paul himself uh, and his ministry team uh, you know, work for the kingdom of God. Um, uh, wherever they went, they taught, they preached, they demonstrated the power of the kingdom of um, God. And, um, uh, you know, uh, they also suffered for the kingdom of God. And we read that in Colossians chapter 4, uh, verse 11, it says, And Jesus, who is also called Justice, these are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are of the circumcision and they have proved to be a comfort to me. So Paul is saying, you know, all of his team members, uh, you know, who preach about the kingdom of God, who build the kingdom of God, uh, you know, they are a comfort to him in his time of trouble, difficulties and uh, tribulations. And Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, uh, John says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. So he says, you know, I was going through persecution and tribulation and, um, you know, uh, was put in this island uh, because I preached the kingdom of God 
uh, about and also about Jesus Christ. So the early church thought about the kingdom of God and we need to also understand the importance of preaching and teaching the kingdom of God, focus on teaching about the kingdom of God in our church to get today and um, uh, and you know preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Okay, that is what is mentioned in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom will preach, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will. Uh, come okay before we close we'll just look at uh, Matthew chapter 21 verses 33 to um, 46 so can somebody read that please Matthew 21 33 to 46 uh, can somebody read that quickly Matthew 21 33 to 46 here another parable there was a certain land owner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it dug a wine press in it and built a tower and he leased it to the wine dressers and went into far country. Now, when vintage time drew near, he sent his servant to the wine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the wine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then, last of all, he sent his son to them saying they will respect my son but when the wine dressers saw the son they said among themselves this is the heir come let us kill him and seize his inheritance so they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him therefore when the owner of the vineyard comes what will he do to the wine dressers they said to him he will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other wine dressers who will render to him the fruits of their season, fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing fruits of it. And whoever falls on the stone will be broken, but on whom, whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Now when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes, because they took him for a, for a prophet. Thank you, John. So here we see in this parable, Jesus is talking about, uh, you know, how the kingdom of, that God had planned uh, to establish his kingdom through the nation of Israel and how the nation of Israel, you know, uh, went away from fulfilling his plan and purposes and how uh, God sent prophets and kings and judges to remind them, people to remind them, but they still did not heed uh, and they, they, they did not fulfill God's plan and purpose. They did not, uh, uh, you know, use the authority and power that God had given them uh, and uh, to be that uh, kingdom of priests, uh, a kingdom that will represent who God is to the other uh, nations. So since they failed, you know, um, uh, God, we see that uh, they were temporarily rejected by God and God has offered it, his uh, kingdom to another nation. And who is the other nation? here it's the church okay the church is you and i comprising of believers uh, from all over the world so you know the the israelites uh, even though god sent different people um, to remind them of their calling and uh, their purpose and how to represent him as king and how to uh, be uh, you know kingdom citizens they failed and they rejected god and god you know temporarily also rejected the israelites and he has uh, offered um, his kingdom to another nation which is the church which is comprising of believers at this you and i so the church uh, which comprises of all the believers of all nations of uh, of every pe uh, people group of every tribe and language uh, you know uh, they will bear fruits of the kingdom so as believers you know god is looking up to each one of us 
and uh, we don't want to reject him we don't want to disappoint him we don't want to break his heart like uh, the people of israel has done so as believers you know we are to uh, bear fruit god is looking for fruit in our lives um and uh, you know he's looking for uh, the outworking of the kingdom of god uh, to be released and to ex be expressed in, in and through our life so god desires that his rule and reign and who he is his his name his uh, uh, his uh, nature his uh, uh, his uh, attributes and what he does to be expressed in and through us here on the earth so are we willing you know, just to take on this position uh, and enjoy these benefits, or we are we willing to take on this responsibility as well uh, about what God has given us and who He's called us to be? What is our position and authority, the dominion that He's given to us, and uh, to establish His kingdom here and express all of who He is and what He does in and through His kingdom here on earth? Okay. Okay, so we'll stop here. Anyone has any questions? Okay, no questions. Okay, if there are no questions, then uh, we'll end class here. Thank you for joining class. Uh, please take time to read uh, the chapters and I hope whatever we are learning that is you know, going to transform your mindset and your perspective, that you begin to operate out of a kingdom perspective and a kingdom mindset. mindset. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a blessed day ahead and uh, um, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.